Oh. What's up dudes? Today we have the Angway M20 moped style electric bike. It's a full suspension, dual battery e-bike. I do have a link below the video to save a little extra money off your order if you wanna buy one, but let's not waste any time here. I'm gonna show you all the parts when we unbox it, then we'll get it outside for a test ride to see how it performs. And after you kick the box open, this is what it looks like. It's got a brown seat, tail light. And here's a first look at the suspension, HLT100. And right away we can see the M20 has mechanical disc brakes, paired up to 160 millimeter drilled rotors. And on the front wheel, we get the same exact 160 millimeter rotor. And it has 20 inch mag wheels, running four inch wide knobby tires. And the hub motor on the rear is labeled 48 volt 750 watt, which as you may know, that is just the continuous output power rated of that motor. Really how much power that motor receives is determined from the controller, which appears to be mounted down here. But the controller has to pull that power from the batteries. So what are we working with here on the batteries? Engway. So this is a 48 volt 13 amp hour battery with a maximum discharge current of 25 amps. So 48 volts times 25 amps is 1,200 watts. And if you do order the dual battery version, oh, what is this? You'll get this dual battery equalizer. It's rated for 30 amps. And of course, your second battery. The second battery has a little cord off of it and it's all gonna hook together. It shows you exactly how to do it all. The second battery is exactly the same as the first. So you're basically just doubling your range or depending on how you ride it, riding faster for longer. What else we got? Whoa, this is quite the headlight. Another box. This is a giant carrying case and uh, not sure what these are for. And the bike comes with a two amp charger. I would have liked to see a three amp charger, but what are you gonna do? Looks like some extra horsepower in here. And the manual has some instructions for a speed limit setting increase, as well as a current limit setting. So we might be able to squeeze a little extra juice out of this thing. And this one comes in green. I think it actually looks good paired up with this brown seat, but it does come in other color options linked below in the description box. Suspension has a compression adjustment. And it is a dual crown fork. Handlebars are like BMX style and have a rise. But dude, check this out. On the right side, full twist throttle. Personally, I do not like those little quarter twist ones. Hand grips actually feel nice. First impressions on the brakes are meh. Super basic seven speed shifter for those of you who are actually going to pedal. And the display looks actually somewhat fancy. Explore a new way. Crank actually looks pretty cool. Super basic derailleur. Metal fenders. Here's what it looks like before you put the headlight on. And now with the headlight installed, getting this shrink wrap off is a little bit of a pain. The lights do rotate independently. Keep this bike looking pretty. It's got a switch and a USB port. You can check the charge on top. So I'm having one minor issue with the dual battery version. So these battery trays are held in with three screws. The three screws look like this. This bottom one was installed for me already. I've removed this screw because up here on the top there are screw holes and there's also this piece I need to put on, but it did not come with screws. So I'm just gonna take this over to the hardware store and find some more like it, and then I'll put this on later. So this whole battery, I'll sit right up here just like this and I'll hook up the dual battery equalizer, but I'm excited to turn this thing on now. So let's turn it on. It's a really pretty good looking display. It has like a 3D looking effect on the text. Max speed, power speed, pedal assist. Trip, odometer, max speed. Let's try the horn. <laughs> light switch. It's also got a very bright tail light and the tail light works as a brake light. So check it out, these exact screws work to put the top battery mount on. It looks exactly like this. Here's what it looks like when you put the screws in there. Is it actually gonna work? Heck yeah. So to connect the two batteries together, you have to install this, which means you have to pop the seat off. And here's the controller. It is a 48 volt, 20 amp current limit controller. And for this part, I'd probably remove the batteries so you don't have live current. Then you just unplug this, take your adapter, plug one end in, then your second battery, then the other end with the fuse plugs into the controller. And then I definitely tape off those connections, stuff everything back down there. I definitely make sure it works before you put the seat back on. If you don't have a deep socket 10 millimeter, taking that seat off is gonna be very difficult. This is the setup right here. All right, let's take the Angway M20 out. We have the manual here so we can adjust the top speed. Power this thing up, both batteries on, full throttle, nothing. Bump it on up, bump up the pedal assist, full throttle. 
We're gonna run Strava so we can see what official distance we get on the dual battery version. And the way I like to start out all these reviews is on a 20% grade hill climb to see how well the bike can perform, climbing an extremely steep hill on its own under throttle only. Now, Angway does not claim that this bike could do this hill, but let's just see what kind of torque it has on its own full throttle. Pedal assist five, ready, go. So about a medium amount of torque, not enough to climb a 20% grade, very, very steep hill. Doing the same hill, starting with a, about a nine mile an hour, 10 mile an hour rollout, full throttle, no pedaling at all. I weigh 200 pounds and the bike can make it up the 20% uh, grade, just barely. So one more rollout here at a little bit slower speed, about five miles an hour. We'll downshift some gears and do full throttle, pedal assist five, giving it a little bit of help pedaling just to see like how it'll do. Um, and you know, it's got about a medium amount of torque. It's not bad at all. Welcome to an absolute beautiful day here in sunny California. First thing I'm really liking about this bike is the full twist throttle. One of the very first things I noticed about this bike is just how easy it is for me to get on. I can just kind of like swing my back leg around just like that. Another thing that I've noticed about it is it has a relatively short seat and popping on that seat, uh, it's pretty comfortable. So trying out pedal assist one on gear one, see what what it does here oh we need to shift up already i'm already in gear seven on pedal assist one it takes me straight up to uh 23 miles an hour that's not right that's kilometers an hour let's get the manual out and change that you press and hold the bottom two buttons for two seconds tab on over to p4 change it to one for miles save we'll change the max speed here in just a few but now we have miles per hour so now on pedal assist one start pedaling 15 miles per hour on pedal assist one with the cadence sensor I wish the display was a little bit brighter. It is a very beautiful display, but it's not like the brightest. That's what my teachers told me in school. Now pedal assist two gives a decent boost in power, brings us up to 17, pedal assist three, a little more boost. Now we're doing 20 and running out of gear already at 21. Uh, this is awkward for a six foot five dude to pedal. My knees are like coming up like a cartoon character. And even though it is kind of awkward to pedal, uh, using throttle only, like it just feels like a moped. Like I feel comfortable on this bike at 6'5". The handlebars are like right, raised up nicely. And you know, right away when I took that seat off to install the second battery, first thing I was thinking is, you know, that controller's right down there. Probably wouldn't take much, you know, 70 bucks, 100 bucks to upgrade the controller and get a little more power out of this bike. I guess I don't know what the maximum discharge rate of these batteries are though. So these short 20 inch wheels on this moped frame definitely make for like a very nimble feeling ride, very motorcycle-y feeling ride. Just wants to, it's, it's very, it feels very tossable. Let's put the suspension to the test a little bit. So it is full suspension, which is nice. It's not like the most plush, Cool suspension I've ever tried, uh, but it's pretty decent. It's way better than a hardtail, I can tell you that. So pedal assist five, we're gonna get out here in traffic a little bit. I'm full throttle right now. We'll see what it can do under stock settings before we modify anything. So out of the box, it's, it's bringing me up to about 26 in a headwind, 27. There is a little bit of a, a lag on the throttle. And there's also a little bit of like dead band in the beginning, I think. Definitely fast enough to get out here a little bit with traffic. No. Right, we're gonna do zero to top speed acceleration. Got the GPS here in my left hand, full throttle. I weigh 200 pounds, ready, go. 10. 15. 20. I want to run it back one time this way just in case the headwind affected it. So go! See if that affects anything at all. 15. 20. We'll average out the two. So to modify the top speed, we just hold those two buttons. So it looks like the max speed is already set at uh, 38. Oh, but here's the juicy stuff. P6, that allows us to change our current limit so current limit is set to 20. So it says it'll, uh, adjustable range is uh, one to 25. Uh, I thought that controller set a max current of 20 though. Oh yeah, well let me bump it up to 25 here. So, all right, we'll try running a higher current and see if that changes our acceleration. So now with the current limit changed to 25 instead of 20, let's do zero to 20, ready, go. See if we feel any sort of di uh, difference whatsoever. 10, headwind, 
15. So, what um, I could not really tell a difference, honestly. I pull throttle, the spike is holding 24, pretty much topping out right around uh, 27. All right, let's see how this thing does riding uh, up this hill here. Ugh. You can do it with a little momentum. <laughs> I wouldn't say, you know, it excels at off-road riding, but it can be done. <laughs> yeah, man. No way. Uh, yeah, yeah. I saw I your sir on. Do you really? Yeah. This is a Juice Joy Rides yeah. video right here. You want to be in it? Sure. <laughs> oh. Dang. Nice, man. Wow. Okay, cool, man. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice setup, man. What's your name? I'll probably see you around out here. Yeah. Have a good ride, man. See you later. Yep. Dude, shredding. Let's see if this thing can go up this hill here. We're gonna work around this dude here. Full throttle, a little pedal assist, downshift. <laughs> Just barely. Yeah, so suspension, you know, it works. It's better than a hardtail. It's not the most plush suspension I've ever felt. So another little thing I noticed, unfortunately, there is uh, when I was going over those bumps, this battery's pretty close to where you sit and uh, kind of slid forward a little bit there. Wasn't the greatest feeling. Just something to be aware of. And bump down a couple gears here and see how we do in the sand. So I can make it through. It can make it through. It, it's doing it. It does have uh, fenders, so no sand's kicking up on me. That's nice. All right, we need to get up here up this hill. 26 inch wheels are a little bit better than 20 inch wheels for off-roading and stuff. But I mean, I guess, you know, it does have enough power to kind of power through all this sand. I'm not pedaling at all. It's uh, getting through four inch wide tires. I can hear the motor struggling, but it can do it. Uh... So one thing I'm definitely noticing about this bike is the throttle. It's definitely like an on off switch. Like I'm trying to like hold a consistent like level of power output cruising along at on pedal assist five. I'm not pedaling, but it just seems like the, the motor is like repeatedly like turning on and off. Um, when I rotate it, just like a fraction of an inch, just like, a you know, one or two degrees. It's just like on or off, on or off. Regardless, I still prefer the full twist throttle compared to like one of those quarter twist throttles because it's just so much more comfortable in my hand rather than trying to like pinch like a small amount of throttle. All right, we're gonna roll into this hill. I'm gonna go full throttle now, not pedaling. See what it can do pulling me up. 200 pounds of weight, nine miles an hour, eight miles an hour, holding eight miles an hour, seven miles an hour, uh, seven miles an hour. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take the Angway M20 up the California incline. I am noticing the seat is a little bit harsh. Not the worst seat I've ever been on, but not the best either. Gotta get around these people. All right, heading into the little loop-de-loop -loop here with a little bit of speed, not pedaling at all. It's pulling me up the loop-de-loop. -loop. Still pulling, still pulling, still pulling, still pulling, still pulling. Full throttle, we're getting up it. And starting from the bottom of the California incline, full throttle, now. Come on, little bike. First time I'm seeing four out of five bars show on the uh, display. Oh gosh, we got bikes coming. So we are accelerating 12 miles an hour, 13 miles an hour, hitting about 17 miles an hour. I really wish I had a watt meter so we could see what kind of power it was pulling from those batteries through the controller. But we were just down there on that bike path. So that's a pretty decent hill climb for the Angway M20. Now what we're gonna do is full throttle uh, down the hill and see, oh man, I don't know if I'm ready to trust these brakes. There's a wall at the end of this hill. It's, I think it's just cutting us off at 28. Yeah, 28. Don't have time to be crashing into this wall head on. All right, so now we're gonna do a brake test from 20 miles per hour. This bike does have 160 millimeter mechanical disc brakes, a uh, little bit below industry standard, uh, but from 20, 
I mean, they definitely work. They bring the bike to a stop. I've definitely felt stronger brakes at the same time. Brake test number two. Brake. I mean, it comes to a stop for sure. Hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors is kind of more standard for a bike of this weight. These brakes definitely work. You'll have less maintenance on them than uh, hydraulic. You won't have to worry about bleeding them or anything. The levers are like not my favorite. Uh, you know, they work, they're totally fine. They just, they don't have as good of a feel as like hydraulic brakes. So I've been out here for 11 and a half miles, about an hour of riding, shoving four out of five bars for the first time on the battery. Let's head on back and see what kind of range we get. Dude, this guy is dominating over here. Wow, nice work. She's gonna give it a try too. Oh, better than I could do. All right, final thoughts on the Angway M20. So we were out there for an hour and 35 minutes, did 19.6 miles, and the M20 is showing two out of five bars remaining. Now I do weigh 200 pounds and I did not pedal this thing one time pretty much the entire time I was riding it. And I was pretty much going wide open throttle the whole time. So I found myself pretty much cruising at about 20 to 25 miles an hour. And according to the official website, it says you could do 47 miles plus 47 miles, you know, 47 per each battery. Now, obviously that's gonna significantly depend on how you ride it, how fast you're going, how much you weigh. Now, would I get 47 plus 47 miles of range on this thing? Absolutely not. I'd probably say realistically, I could do about 40 miles. I mean, it is a 48 volt system and two, 13 amp hour batteries, so 26 total amp hours. And that is a lot of total energy. However, I find myself when I get more watt hours in the tank, it just kind of encourages me to go faster rather than get more range. It also claims 55 Newton meters of torque and that's exactly what it feels like on my steep hill test. And the 55 Newton meters of torque will help you climb hills, but it's not like a hill climbing monster. The brakes are meh, they're mechanical. They don't feel great. They bring the bike to a stop. They're not the most powerful brakes I've ever tried, but that's when we have to start talking about price. I mean, this is a $1,300 bike with the single battery or 1600 bucks right now with dual battery. However, I do have an additional coupon code below this video in the description box. So if you do wanna grab an Angway M20, and if you'd like to help support this channel while also getting a discount, you can use the link in my code below this video. I think probably one of the best things this bike has going for it is its look. I really like the look of this color, especially in combination with the seat color. And the thing that really stands out on this bike is the headlights. Also the rear integrated tail light, it just looks clean and nice. Overall, I think the bike is decent. However, if the Angway M20 is not the bike you're looking for, you can watch this video here next. Thanks for watching guys. Give me a thumbs up, drop a comment, and I'll catch you in my next video.